Hello. I must begin by thanking Gillian and Werner Bickley, without whose encouragement and support I would never have written All at Sea. Their advice and guidance at every stage has been invaluable and is greatly appreciated. I must also thank the Hong Kong Arts Development Council for their generous support. After serving for six years on British ships, I joined the Swire Group in 1976 because they were based in Hong Kong and I loved it here. For almost 50 years I've been involved in Hong Kong shipping and have witnessed one of the greatest transformations in industrial history as general cargo gave way to containers and Hong Kong became the biggest container port in the world. I was lucky because when I started ships would spend a week in Hong Kong while hundreds of stevedores loaded individual cartons, cases, even canoes for delivery to countries throughout the Pacific. We had time in port to explore and meet people and never had any money left at the end of the month. Nowadays, a container ship arrives at Kwai Chung in the morning and it's gone again by early evening. My book describes those days and pays tribute to the Hong Kong men and women I worked with. They were the most skillful navigators and engineers and the hardest working people I ever met. It may be difficult for younger people to imagine an era which was full of hope and when we all sensed we were contributing to creating a very special place. But it was a special time, full of special people. Having said that, the book is not a mournful eulogy for times past because along with the hard work there was an awful lot of serious enjoyment. And I've tried to convey this as I describe a career which took me from cargo and passenger ships to offshore supply vessels and finally to tugs here in Hong Kong. I suppose we're all prima donnas who like to think we're the best at what we do and salvage work is the ultimate refuge for the prima donna. When a ship is sinking or on fire and the crew have abandoned her or when a jumbo jet is in the harbour and needs to be recovered, the salver steps in and tries to sort it out when everyone else has given up. And in my 20 years with Hong Kong Salvage and Towage, we never lost a ship or aircraft that we set out to save and never spilled even a drop of oil in the harbour. We were so good, you've never heard of us. Because you can be sure if we had ever lost a ship and had it sink, or if we'd ever spilled any oil, we would have been on the front page of every newspaper in Hong Kong. The stories are all in the book, which I hope you'll enjoy. Whether it's the tale of white slavers in Japan, or vicious pirates in the Philippines, or stories of burning ships and the brave men I worked with, it's the story of my life, or at least the bits I can remember. Times have changed and shipping has evolved, but it's still a fascinating business and I hope readers of my book will be tempted to find out more. One of the biggest changes I've witnessed has been the arrival of women. I entered an exclusively male industry in 1969 and didn't even sail with my first female officer until 1980. That was on Hong Kong's passenger ship, which was the only vessel in the Swire fleet which had separate bathroom facilities which could be used by female officers. So please bear in mind, the lack of women is not about gender inequality, it's merely a lack of bathroom facilities. Thank you, and I hope you'll enjoy the book.